Welcome to the Wonders Protocol for the Summer 2019 Sampling Campaign. The sampling kit provided by Wonders contains the items in this list, which is provided in the protocol document. In addition to the sampling kit provided by Wonders, you will also need the following items listed below. Sediments will be collected from three sites. Ideally, all sites will be within 100 metres of the stream gauge. Do your best based on local conditions, but try make the three sites at least 10 metres apart from each other. The first step is identifying the three sites, then collect metadata, then collect water samples at the most downstream site, and finally collect sediments. These steps will be demonstrated in this video. Begin by filling out the metadata sheet. For each sampling location, record latitude and longitude in decimal degrees. You can use a GPS or a smartphone app such as My GPS Coordinates or Google Maps. At the most downstream sampling location, take the following photos. One looking across the river to give a sense of how broad the river is. One looking upstream showing the river surface, shoreline sediments and vegetation and one looking downstream, showing the river surface, shoreline sediments, and vegetation. At the most downstream location, measure the pH of the surface water, using the pH strips provided. Also at the most downstream location, measure the temperature of the water at 50% of the column depth. Record it on the data sheet in degrees Celsius. Please confirm that all fields on the paper metadata sheet are filled out prior to leaving the field, and take a picture of the data sheet. This picture will be uploaded with the photos. You will fill in the rest of the metadata via an online form. After collecting the metadata, put on the provided nitrile gloves and proceed to the most downstream sampling site for unfiltered water sample collection. One at a time, unscrew the vial cap and with the opening pointing upstream, submerge the vial in the river water to 50% depth. For the glass vials, fill at least to the pre-marked line at approximately 30 millilitres. For the 15 millilitre falcon tubes, fill to at least 12 millilitres. Store all on ice. After locating the three small 4 milliliter vials, open the 60 milliliter syringe packet and fill the syringe with river water, collecting water from 50% of the column depth. For the first time that you use the syringe, flush three times. After flushing, fill the syringe again from 50% of the water column depth. This is the water sample to be collected. Screw the syringe onto the filter that has the needle connected to it. Remove the plastic cover that is protecting the needle while the needle is still in the filter package. Do not touch the outlet of the syringe, the inlet of the filter, or any part of the needle. Push 5 ml of water through the filter needle assembly. This water is not collected. Place the tip of the needle near the bottom of the vial and push water through the filter. Keep the needle in the vial and push about 15 millilitres in, letting it overflow. This will exchange the vial volume a few times for a robust sample. It's important to keep the vial completely full and seal the vial with the lid so there is no headspace. Do not collect all replicates at once. 
Instead, collect the first replicate of all the filtered sample types, then repeat the collection of each sample type until all replicates are collected. There should be sufficient water in the syringe to collect the following sample. If more water is needed, unscrew the filter needle assembly from the syringe. If sampling alone, carefully place the filter needle assembly back into the cover. After refilling, screw the syringe back onto the filter needle assembly and expel a small volume of water. This water is not collected. Locate the 40 milliliter amber vial with yellow tape. There's only one of these and unlike the other amber vials, this one has no acid. Do not unscrew the top of the vial, but instead remove the flip top cap on the glass vial. Pierce the septum with the needle and fill the vial to the pre-marked fill line. If you need to put down the needle, carefully place the filter needle assembly back into the plastic needle cover that is still in the filter package. There is only one replicate of this sample type. Locate the plastic, blue-capped falcon tubes. Fill one of the blue cap falcon tubes to 15 milliliters. Do not touch the inside of the vial with the needle, filter housing, or anything else. Cap the tube and place it in the cooler. Move on to the next sample type. Do not collect all replicates at once. Refill the syringe if necessary. Locate the three 40 milliliter amber vials that are not marked with yellow tape. These contain a very small volume of phosphoric acid. By piercing the septum with the needle, fill one of the acidified amber glass vials to the pre-marked line. Do not unscrew the vial cap and don't touch the septum. Shake the vial gently to incorporate the acid into the sample. Store the vial on ice. There is no need to replace the flip top cap that previously covered the septum. Locate the plastic, orange capped falcon tubes. These contain acid. Fill one of the tubes to 15 milliliters. Turn over gently to mix the acid into the sample. Repeat the collection of one replicate of each sample until all replicates are collected. Collect one 125 ml sample of filtered water using the same protocol method as the blue falcon tubes in the previous section. Do this after all other replicates are collected. After filling the vials, you will need to push more water volume through the filter to ensure enough microbial material is captured. Fill the 60 milliliter syringe, ensuring you do not touch the outlet of the syringe or the inlet of the filter. Push another 10 full syringe volumes of water through the filter. The goal is to filter about 700 milliliters of water through the filter unit. 
do not collect any of this filtered water. If the filtration rate slows down significantly and it becomes difficult to push water through the filter, it's okay to stop filtering and move on to the next step, as there is likely enough microbial biomass on the filter. Detach the 60 milliliter syringe from the filter, expel the remaining water, and fill the syringe with air. Attach the air filled syringe to the filter and push the air through the filter. The goal is to expel as much water from the filter as possible. Repeat two or three times if needed. Take one of the small lure lock caps provided, dip it into the stream to rinse it, and then attach it to the open or the discharge end of the filter. Note that the filter has a male side and a female side, and therefore there are two types of caps provided. From the provided supplies, take out the small plastic epitube filled with RNA later. This is the preservative for the filter. Also take out the 3 milliliter syringe and a new needle. Connect the new needle to the syringe, carefully open the small epitube and fill the syringe with RNA later by simply putting the needle down into the liquid. Take the used filter off the 60 milliliter syringe, taking care not to touch the inlet. Then attach the 3 milliliter syringe to the filter and rotate so that the syringe is facing down and the filter is below it. Push the plunger to slowly fill the filter with RNA later. Fill until you feel some resistance or have used all the RNA later. Locate the remaining lure lock cap dip it into the stream to rinse it, and then attach it to the filter. Gently shake the sealed filter to distribute the RNA later. Put the capped filter into a small well pack, tie up to seal, and place in the cooler. Please ensure that no water enters the well pack bag. Starting at the downstream location, Put on a new pair of nitro gloves to be used for all sediment locations. Remove the 30 milliliter metal scoop from the packaging, ensuring you only touch the scoop handle and not the spoon. Unwrap the scoopula and ensure you only touch the scoopula handle. Wash by dipping it in the stream. Collect surface sediments within one meter squared at a number of locations. Use the scoop to collect surface sediments from 1 to 3 centimetres depth, avoiding large debris. The goal is to fill the jar with composite samples from multiple scoops. Decant any excess water from the 125 milliliter jar. We just need the sediment, not the water for this piece. For the downstream location only, you will also need to locate the two 50 milliliter falcon tubes pre-filled with RNA later. Use these to take composite samples in the same way as you did with the jar. Only add sediment to the fill line indicated on the RNA later tube. Overfilling will diminish the preservation of RNA. Store the sealed tubes and jar in the cooler. Repeat the sediment sampling protocol at the middle and upstream sites. Be sure to rinse the sediment scoop in river water between sites to reduce cross-site contamination. Place all the samples, all vials, bottles, jars, and the filter preserved in RNA later in a refrigerator. Please don't use a freezer as these will render the samples unusable. Place the ice packs in the freezer to ensure that they are frozen for transit. 
After the samples are in the refrigerator, please enter metadata into the digital form. Full instructions are provided in the protocol document. When you're ready to ship, place the glass vials back in the vial holder, located in the cooler, and place the vials and the vial holders into a Ziploc bag. If there is a broken vial, please do not send it back. Instead, find some material to place in the vial holder to take the place of the missing vial. Also inside the cooler include the unused filter, unused needle, measuring tape, scoop, spatula, and absorbent padding that came with the supplies. Pack those materials into the cooler and then place the frozen ice packs on top. Put the lid of the cooler on and fill out the field on the paper metadata sheet for the time and date that the box is packed. Place the metadata sheet on top of the lid. This will keep it dry. Tape the outer box closed with enough packing tape to make sure it won't come open during transit. Adhere the shipping label to the outside of the box by removing the backing from the plastic sleeve that contains the shipping label. Drop the package off, or have it picked up, by FedEx. On the same day that you ship the package, notify wonders at pnnl.gov that you shipped the package, and include the FedEx tracking number in your email. This is critical to ensure sample integrity and timely delivery.